Hi, my name is Gaurav Dave, and today we will have a look at the strategy required to prepare for and crack MHCET 2020 in these next three months. So, most of you would have taken a number of these aptitude tests for your MBA admissions this year and would have completed exams like CAT, SNAP, IFT, etc. By the time we reach CET, you would have already got results for most of these tests and would know where you stand. So, some, might, some of you might get disappointed or disgruntled and wonder why to take CET at all. But, as you know, one of the most prominent institutes in the country, JBIMS, takes CET scores. So, it still remains a very tempting option. So, I would say that you need to plan out your studies over these next three months and take it with the same seriousness as you would take, say, a CAT or an NMAT or a ZAT or IFT. So, how do we prepare? Now, before we prepare for the test, we first need to understand the nature of the beast. What do I mean by this? So, every exam has a few unique characteristics. The important characteristics of MHCET are threefold. Firstly, it has gone online since the last few years. So, there are no sectional timings, which means you can keep shuffling between sections. You can attempt sections in any order that you want, unlike CAT. Two, there are no sectional cutoffs. So, unlike an IFT, you don't need to attempt some questions within each section. You can play completely to your strengths. And third, like NMAT, MHCET is the only exam that does not have negative marking. So, you need to attempt all 200 questions. So, broadly, if you see, CET has this combination of three important factors. No sectional cutoffs, no sectional timings and no negative marking which means it gives you full freedom to attempt all the questions and be experimental. At the same time, you need to remember that it is also a test of your decision making because you need to attempt the right questions in order to get that score that ensures a call from Bajaj. So, it's not just a speed test. In my opinion, it's a speed plus decision making test. Now, before we go into the strategy for the exam, let's first understand what is the test structure? So, CET over the years always used to have four broad areas which were part of just one homogeneous test with all the questions being mixed around. But since the last few years, it has created four clear and distinct sections. So, these are logical ability or LR for 75 questions. Then you have quant and DI that is 50 questions. Verbal ability, 50 questions and visual reasoning, which used to be the hallmark of CET, 25 questions. Each question carries one mark. So, you have 200 questions, 200 marks and all this is to be done in 150 minutes, two and a half hours. That is why CET is called a speed test. So, how do we do all of this? There was a time when people used to score 180 and 175 in CT when the questions used to be simpler. But one thing that you need to remember is over the last three or four years, CT is being conducted by IBPS, that is the body that conducts bank exams. And some of the questions that are picked up from bank exams tend to be really tough. So, over the last two years, CT has become a very difficult exam to crack. And people have been getting a 99.9 or 99.99 even at scores as low as 130, 135. So, your entire strategy changes accordingly. Let us have a look at each section in greater detail to understand how you should study. So, firstly, we start with the biggest section and the toughest section that is LR. Logical reasoning in CET broadly comprises two parts. You have non-verbal reasoning, which is the typical LR section, roughly 60 out of 75 questions. Now, remember that this is not a fixed rule. It's a thumb of rule judgment that you will have 60, 61 questions from LR and anywhere around 15 to 16 questions from critical reasoning, which also includes syllogisms. 
Let's look at both these parts in greater detail now. So when we consider these 60 questions of LR, remember that CET is a exam very heavy on arrangement based sets. Now what are these arrangement based sets? In a video a few days later, I will also discuss the detailed analysis of these sets. But for now, what you need to understand is these are the kind of sets that you prepare for when you start preparing for CAT. Stuff like circular arrangements, then you have linear arrangements in one row, two rows, two columns. You have floor based arrangements, scheduling of people in one week or lectures in a month or so on. Then you have matrix based questions, X by Y matrix, so five people, five hobbies, five cities, etc. Now all these arrangements based questions might look easy. Oh, this is something we've done and we can solve this. But remember, as I said, these are all conducted by the IBPS and IBPS has very tough arrangement based questions. So for instance, a circular arrangement might not just be eight people in a circle. You will have eight people sitting in a circle. Some of them are facing the center. Some are facing outside and you don't know how many are facing in and out. Also, you are given their family relationship. So you need to create the entire circle with these eight people, identify the relation with respect to each other. Plus your job is not done yet. Earlier, the questions used to be such that once you drew that circular arrangement, you just had to mark the answers. Who is sitting here? Who is the father of this, etc. What CET will do is it will ask you questions like who is sitting third to the right of A. You will feel, oh, this is an easy question. But when you look at the options, your options are of the form the father-in-law of the person sitting left of A, the wife of the brother of B, one option will be C, etc. So every option will be framed in a different manner. And unless you've got the entire picture correct and you understand each relationship, you'll not be able to answer the question. Then one question might be which of these statements is definitely true. And because there are cases, you need to identify the definitely false, may or may not be true and definitely true. So if you look at the sets and the questions, there is a dual challenge. Solve the set and then spend time in the questions as well. So good sets end up taking anywhere around 15 minutes of your time. Now consider that in a 75 question section, nearly 35 questions are of this type. So arrangements, five, you have anywhere around 5 to 7 sets comprising approximately 35 questions. When you consider this entire chunk, it looks very tempting to solve all of them. But if you solve all of them, you've lost 60 minutes straight away and got only 35 minutes. So you need to strategize. Plus these sets tend to be really tough. Once you've crossed this hurdle, another common question type in CET LR is what is called a sequential output tracing. For those of you who've attempted NMAT and IFT, this will be a common question type. But don't rely only on practice for those two exams for sequential output tracing. So here they come up with a lot of logic or patterns that are really tough and might just not click. Plus this question type is such that you just don't understand. So it's like a binary question type. Either you get it or you don't. So it requires a lot of practice of bank level questions of this type to try and crack it and you might still not be sure. Then you have sentence coding which is again Theoretically similar to what you study for a SNAP or IFT, but practically different because it is it follows a typical bank flavor. The remaining questions are more or less puzzles. So you might have a small set on direction based questions. You might have a few syllogisms, family tree, series, codes, etc. But on the whole, if you look at these 60 questions, this is a tough section. And definitely you need at least one hour or a little more only for LR. Coming to the other part of this section, which is critical reasoning, comprises approximately 15 to 16 questions. What are the areas covered here? So the standard question types all appear, 
which means in her uh, statements and conclusions statements and implicit assumptions course of action cause and effect once upon a time cet used to have a five question set on probably definitely true or false two three years back they experimented with one passage and two or three critical reasoning questions so essentially like a short rc but you will definitely find around 15 to 16 questions so that is the broad breakup of lr my recommendation would be that for this section you definitely need to practice ibps po mocks and solve as many bank questions and mhct practice questions as possible you cannot rely solely on theory for this section let's move on to the next section now which is verbal ability once upon a time cet used to be a very easy test as far as verbal was concerned it was an absolute cake walk with rc close passage jumbled etc over the last 3 years this has become a moderate to tough section mainly because of the instructions given against each question now you might wonder how can instructions make the test tough what cet does is it might be a simple question saying one part of this sentence is highlighted and it is incorrect and you need to replace it but over the last 2 3 years what cet has been doing is they'll have one question where it is highlighted and you replace it with the right one one where it is highlighted and three parts can replace it you need to select which combination one where it is highlighted the incorrect part only needs to be identified so all these questions might look absolutely similar and you might start marking answers accordingly but when you read the instructions you realize that there is some difference in each instruction and each question was to be solved differently similarly for jumbled sentences a variation introduced last year was you had a set of five sentences so okay just to give you a background cet used to have this question type you had five jumbled sentences or six sentences you arranged them into a sequence and the questions were simple which is the first sentence which is the second third fourth simple so you solve it you get all the marks now what they have started doing is there is a passage with these five six statements then there is a blank one statement is missing now one question will be which of these blanks can fill that which of these statements can fill that blank two which of these statements will follow the fourth statement so it becomes a combination of para completion and jumbled sentences which makes it trickier S the same logic is applied to nearly every question type so if we look at this overall structure of verbal you have two rcs or more or less which comprise 15 to 16 questions the questions tend to be inferential some are factual one or two may be vocabulary based you might have a close passage five to six questions a jumbled sentence based set again five to six questions and the rest of the test is more or less grammar and word usage based but with very very unique instructions so for this section you need to have a very good grasp on your grammar and for these next 3 months i would suggest that you go and revise your grammar well not the grammar of the kind that you see in snap but really more like word usage sentence formation errors in sentences so errors is what you need to really focus on and then start practicing cet level questions from earlier mocks section tests practice tests etc because till the time you don't get accustomed to different types of questions you'll struggle big time in verbal ability next let's move on to the quant and di section which is typically a moderate section earlier again here the di used to be fairly simple but the level has gone up in the last couple of years in this section nearly half the section is devoted to di so typically out of the 50 questions 24 questions are di based in four sets of six questions each and your di is not really very logical it's more calculative in nature so you might have one bar chart with say number of students appearing for an exam in schools and then a table with ratio of male to female or pass to fail and so on and then you need to correlate the two and make the calculations 
you might have a missing table. Typically, CET has two question types, which are common to both bank and CET exams. One is a caselet, and it often is a maths based caselet. So, over the last few years, CET has started coming up with maths based DI. So, you might have a bar graph which shows the number of days that seven people take to complete a task. So, it's a time and work question, but asked as a DI set. Or there might be a line graph that shows speeds of trains, time and distance, DI. There are caselets where you have ratio and proportion for say five, six people given as a caselet. You have three set when asked as a caselet. A unique question type is a typical missing table. Let's say five students, five subjects and their marks are given. And you might have two or three clues, so you need to fill that table. What they also do is your questions are conditional, which means your table will not get filled. But for each question, they will say, if A had so many marks in physics, what happens? If B was not the topper in chemistry, what happens? So, you end up spending a lot of time. Again, like LR, question selection or set selection becomes very important. Apart from these 24 odd questions, CET has one unique feature that it asks you number series or number based odd man out questions in quant, not in LR. So, there are generally 5 or 6 of these questions in quant. Then you also have data sufficiency, which can either be 2 statement or 3 statement. We will come to that in subsequent videos. You also have quantitative comparison, which is not something you find in other exams, but it is a CET favorite. So, you have 2 maths questions in one. And you need to identify which of these values is greater. CET also has a unique kind of quant comparison where you have two quadratic equations and you need to find the nature of roots, compare them. So, very unique questions, you need to practice a lot of them. The remaining 10 12 questions are pure maths. Over the years, these have also started becoming slightly tougher. So, if you look at this entire section, here Yes, you might need some theoretical knowledge because you need to know the formula, etc. There is a lot of emphasis on arithmetic, geometry and modern math. So, you need to be prepared on those aspects. Quadratic equations is something that you need to know. And DI with the right question selection can give you a lot of marks. Last but not the least, let us move on to the visual reasoning section, which really scares a lot of students but is also scoring. There are students who really cracked CET and gone to Bajaj without attempting a single question of visual reasoning. But now that visual has started appearing in some other exams as well, people are more or less prepared. So, what do you expect here? In those 25 questions, you will have a series of 4 or 5 or 6 figures. You need to identify the 7th or you need to identify the missing figure. You might have analogies which are picture based. So, A is to B, C is to D or four sets of figures looking similar, one is dissimilar. So, you need to work out all these practice questions here again. Then you have odd man out questions, five figures, four are alike, one is not or five figures, four are alike, replace one and get a series and so on. So, visual reasoning is also called spatial reasoning, requires a lot of practice from section tests and mocks in a high speed environment to get you comfortable. On the whole, this entire structure of CET is very, very practice oriented. In CAT, we tell people that you need to understand what you are doing rather than just practicing questions. In CET, it is the exact opposite. You need to be in rhythm. So, suppose you can solve 20 circular arrangements, the better it is because it sets you on one part to solve it very quickly. Similarly, you need to try and take as many mocks and as many section tests that you can. If we look at the overall strategy for the next three months, what I would do, considering that CET is on 14th and 15th March, I would potentially not touch a mock till 14th or 15th January. For the next one month, I would try and focus on solving certain types of questions every day. So, if 2 hours a day are dedicated to say complex arrangements, solve 5 or 6 good sets, 
then move on to one hour of verbal, then move on to two hours of DI and so on. But practice as many questions in one sitting as you can over the next one month. Then somewhere in mid-Jan, take a mock and get a hang of how many questions you can attempt seriously. It's okay if you don't attempt all 200 at this stage. Please understand this is not the same as attempting 200 questions in the mock. So attempt whatever you can seriously right now and look at where you are going quickly, where you are going wrong, which kind of question type you can't solve. Start reworking on that and take a mock every 3-4 days. From Jan 15th to say March 5th or 10th, in that period of around 50-55 days, I would recommend that you need to practice at least 15 to 20 mocks, which translates to a mock every 2-3 days. The analysis in CET is not as thorough as what you require in CAT, but you need to know what kind of question type you are doing well and which kind of question type you are not doing well because they are well defined. So I would break up my preparation that way and keep practicing section tests and practice tests in between. For the actual exam, a few tips that you need to remember. All 200 questions need to be attempted, come what may. So even if you have 160 great attempts, mark the other 40 blindly. Play to your strengths. So if you feel that quant, LR, DI and verbal, visual is bad, focus on those three areas and try and get maximum marks there. Practice as many questions as you can. Practice as many mocks as you can. These four or five points will give you a lot of impetus in solving CET based questions in the mocks and actual exam. In subsequent videos, over the next three months, we will have a detailed look at certain question types and how to solve them faster. Right now, take this strategy, start preparing for CET with practice questions and do well. Thank you and wish you all the very best for CET 2020.